Hey guys, welcome to Tuesday Manna. Um, I'm so excited for what God has for us today. Today, I want to talk about saying yes to God. Because I think sometimes we get so much into our comfort zone and we just want to say no. Um, God calls every Christian to be a light, right? We're supposed to shine Jesus so other people will see so that we can lead them to him. Um, Today, I want to look at the book of Jonah. And what we're going to look at why we need to say yes, God, through someone who said no. <laughs> and we'll see ourselves in this a lot. Um, I want to give an example. So an example of God leading. So the first time I was asked to do man, I was actually at Pastor Ron's house. We were hanging out. We were chilling. And Pastor Ron says, what are you doing Monday morning? And me not thinking, being silly. I'm like, well, at eight o'clock, he said. And I, at eight o'clock, that's when manna starts. I'll be at manna. He's like, do you want to lead it? And I'm like... Oh, I fell right into that trap. And at first, it's like, man, that's way out of my comfort zone. I don't want to say yes. I don't think I've taught kids the Bible, but I've never had to teach adults, right? And it's like, I feel that God was pulling me out of my comfort zone. So he convinced me to do it. I did it. And it's just been a blessing ever since. Those are the kind of things I'm talking about. There's times where we need to be pushed out of our comfort zone because that's when we can use God's strength. Okay, we're going to talk about that. But... Before we get into Jonah, before we get into saying yes to God, let's pray. Oh, and I forgot one thing, right? Our life really starts when we say yes to Jesus and to his gospel. That's when we get to live for God. So that's just another amazing thing. Um, Let's go ahead and let's pray, and then we'll get started. Dear Heavenly Father, God, I come before you, and I just thank you so much for this time. God, I just pray that you would speak to these people through your words, God, and I just pray that they would understand you you better, understand your word better, God, and they would just come closer to you in this time. I thank you that we get to do this every morning. God, I pray that you'd be with us. We thank you for that. We pray these things in your name. Amen. So, Jonah is... A pretty short book, right? Four chapters. We're not going to read through the whole thing because that would take a while. But it is an amazing book. And in this book, we know. So the first thing I want to talk about is what it looks like when we say no. Also in Jonah, with Jonah, it's Jonah runs away. So I'd like to start reading. So let's read chapter one, verses one through three, just to get some background. Now the word of the Lord came to Jonah, the son, the son of Amittai, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry out against it, for their wickedness has come up before me. But Jonah arose to flee to Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. He went down to Joppa and found a ship going to Tarshish. So he paid a fare and went down into it to go with them to Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. So, This is awesome because I think we find ourselves in the same thing. When God asks us to do something, we run away. Now, let's just get a mental picture here. If you're looking at the Mediterranean, kind of where Israel is, right over there, um, if you're going to Tarshish, that's in Spain. So he would have to get on a boat and go completely west to get to Tarshish, right? Whereas Nineveh was east. So he gets in a boat and runs in the exact opposite direction that God told him. And as I was thinking about this, like, how many times have you called me to do something, God? And I say no. And not only do I say no, but I turn and run in the opposite direction, right? Jonah says, I'm not going to Nineveh. I know that they're wicked. I don't want to deal with that. I'm going to go the opposite way. So God, when he calls us to do things, it's not easy things, right? Someone once said that God will never give us more than we can handle, And I strongly disagree with that statement. Strongly. I don't believe it's biblical. In fact, I think when God gives us more than we can handle, that's when we can rely on his strength, right? When we step out of our comfort zone, that's when we get to step into God's strength. And God covers us with that. And this is the same here. So let's look at Jonah coming back. The next thing is how do we come back? Because after we've said no to God, How do we come back? And I want to look at that through Jonah. And this will be verses 9 and 10. So we need to know that when we say no to God, right, we're sinning. We're missing the mark. And we need to repent. And our sin rarely just affects us. There's so many times that we think, you know, this is just my sin. It's personal. It doesn't affect anybody else. 
but that's not the way it goes. Sin spreads and it affects those closest to you. In this case, in Jonah's case, it affects everybody in the boat with him. So they get in the boat. Let's give a little back up to 9 and 10. Sorry. But they get in the boat. They're getting ready to head to Tarshish and a huge storm comes. And <laughs> people are like, hey, some God's against us. Which one of you is doing something you shouldn't, right? And Jonah confesses that it's him, right? So here's what it says in verse 9. It says, so they have asked him. So let's actually start in 7 and we'll make our way to 10. It says, and they, send a, and, uh, and they said to one another, come, let us cast lots that we may know for whose cause this trouble has come to us. So they cast lots, and the lot fell on Jonah. Then they said to him, Please tell us, for whose cause is this trouble upon us? What is your occupation, and where do you come from? What is, in, what is your country, and what people are you? So he said to them, I am a Hebrew, and I fear the Lord, the God of heaven, who made the sea and the dry land. Then the men were exceedingly afraid, and said to him, why have you done this? For the men knew that he fled from the presence of the Lord because he had told them. Then they said, What shall we do to you that the sea may be calm for us? For the sea was growing tempestuous. And he said to them, Pick me up and throw me into the sea. Then the sea will be calm for you. For I know that this great tempest is because of me. Nevertheless, the men rode hard to return to land, but they could not, for the sea continued to grow more tempestuous against them. Therefore they cried out to the Lord, We pray, O Lord, please do not let us perish for this man's life, and do not charge us with his innocent blood, for you, O Lord, have done it as, they pleased, as it pleased you. So they picked up Jonah and threw him into the sea, and the sea ceased from raging. Then the men feared the Lord exceedingly and offered sacrifices to the Lord and took vows. So Jonah's sin affected those with him in the boat, right? And he said, hey, you throw me off. This tempestuous raging storm is because of me. Throw me off and God will deliver you. And as soon as they do it, right, the sea stops. It makes you wonder. I wonder if it's like he was sitting in the sea and they're like, oh, it's better. And they try to drag him back on the boat and it starts again. And, they, you know, it's like, did that happen? You know, the Bible doesn't say, but it's kind of interesting to think about. But Jonah admits his sin to those around him. And then immediately after that, he's swallowed by a great fish. And he's sitting in the belly of this fish three days and three nights. And this is where Jonah admits, the next thing he admits is he repents and he admits his sin to God. Then the fish takes him and spits him out closer to Nineveh, right? And Jonah finally says yes to God. And Jonah goes to Nineveh. Um, and if you look, that's in chapter 3 of Jonah, verses 1 and 2. It says, Now the word of the Lord came to Jonah the second time. Sometimes we need more than once, right? Saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and preach to it the message that I tell you. So Jonah arose and went to Nineveh according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceedingly great city, a three-day journey in extent. And Jonah began to enter that city on the first day's walk. And he cried out and said, Yet forty days, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. So Jonah does what the word of the Lord has said, right? He goes in and he preaches to Nineveh. He preaches what the word of God said. And by the power of God, all of Nineveh repents, right? God, they, you know, they return, they turn from their wickedness, they repent, they get sackcloth, they're fasting, sackcloth and ashes, and they repent, and you would think at this point that Jonah would be excited, right? Because he just completed the word of God. He did what God had told him to. He said yes after he had said no. He had repented. But that wasn't Jonah's heart. Because Jonah, I think, in his heart thought that they would be hard-hearted. That the Ninevites would not repent. And that God would have to destroy them. So he went up, not thinking they'd repent. And he sat on a rock and he was going to watch the judgment of God on Nineveh. Um, it didn't come though because they repented, right? And so God actually builds up this plant for him. He has a plant grow to help shade Jonah in the middle of this desert, right? So the plant's there and Jonah's still cursing God like, why'd you have me come here? I don't understand the point. So God kills the plant and Jonah kind of laments for the plant. 
And there's a lesson in that for God. And we're going to pick that up in four, in in Jonah chapter four, and we're going to start in verse nine. Then God said to Jonah, is it right for you to be angry about the plant? And he said, it is right for me to be angry, even to death. Jonah's so stubborn, and I think sometimes we get this stubborn, right? But the Lord said, you have had pity on the plant for which you have not labored, nor made it grow, which came up in a night and perished in a night. And should I not pity Nineveh, the great city in which are more than 120,000 persons who cannot discern between their right hand and their left, and much livestock? So God's saying, you pitied the plant, but you can't pity all these people that repented, right? So Jonah had it in his head that God was going to judge Nineveh. But Nineveh repented, and God had mercy on them. God had grace, right? Jonah did what was asked of him, and he learned a big lesson in it. So from all of this, what, if God is calling you to do something, we all know that as Christians, we're all called to witness. We're all called to share Christ. And we're sh- called to read the word and pray so that we become more like Christ. So people see that, right? The Bible says that our love for one another is how people know that we follow Christ. So when they see that and they ask you, it's your job to share right? Or maybe God's a having you through somebody else, through a pastor asking you to do something, to serve here, but it's out of your comfort zone. My challenge for you is to look for those moments, because I promise you when you step out of your comfort zone, out of your strength, you step into God's. And God will pick you up and he will take you. And he does amazing things through us, right? It's not us that do it. It's not me. It's God. And it's amazing what we, when we can see God working in our lives or in other people's lives through some things that he has called us to do. It's amazing. So as you go out today, look for those moments where God is calling you, maybe to talk to your friend about what's going on, maybe to serve your friend, maybe to serve at your church, maybe to witness, right? Look for those moments today and say yes to God. Don't run away, right? Don't go to Tarshish, but let's go and let's witness. Thanks, guys. Have a good day.